The easiest way to make birdies in golf is to get on the par fives in two. So it's so crucial to be able to hit your second shot close to the green or preferably on the green when you're farther away. That takes a good club head speed though. Not only do we have to hit a long drive, a lot of times we're gonna have to hit a long approach shot. And that's what we're gonna go over today. I'm gonna give you three awesome tips on how to increase your club head speed and start hitting it farther right now. So let's go ahead and start with the first tip here. Now in golf, a certain amount of swing speed comes from your body, the hips, the shoulders, the arms, and that creates momentum. Then we're gonna add to that with the hands and arms. I'm gonna cover both of these in this one video. But as I turn back, I wanna have my hips and my shoulders really load up. And then as they unwind, I'm gonna be creating momentum in the downswing. And then my arms and hands are gonna to add to that momentum with lag and release. So you can kind of think of this as a wrecking ball. Your body is the wrecking ball. It has more weight, it has more power, but it doesn't move really, really fast. We just wanna get that momentum going in the right direction by loading up and unwinding. And then our hands and arms are gonna be the really fast piece that adds on top of that. So the crucial piece for this and the piece that I see people struggle with is something that we address in our power turn in our top speed golf system, and that's loading the hips and shoulders. So as I go to the top of my swing, I wanna make sure that as I go all the way back, I wanna load up and I want my hips to get it around 45 degrees of turn. A lot of times, one of the most popular things out there right now is to restrict your hip turn and really separate your hips and shoulders. I wanna separate my hips and shoulders but I wanna go ahead and get a decent amount of hip turn. That allows me to go even farther back and to create some momentum. Your really long hitters are always gonna get a good hip turn going into the backswing. And a good way to visualize this is by thinking about where is my belt buckle gonna point. So I want you to do about 100 repetitions going to the top of your swing, and I want my belt buckle to point at least 45 degrees back, and I want my weight to be on the inside of my right foot as I'm loading up. So it should look something like this. I'm gonna check that belt buckle, make sure it's pointing out here. And that's gonna allow me to then add my shoulder turn and get at least a 90 degree shoulder turn, preferably a little bit more than that. So if you've been told to kind of stall out the hips, not to restrict the hip turn, we wanna get away from that. We wanna get a nice solid hip turn as we're going back. Now the next piece that we're gonna do here after we've gotten this is we're gonna turn through to a good full finish with the hips. So as I'm coming through, my hips and body are rotating, they're creating that momentum, kind of like a wrecking ball swinging into a house. We're not gonna go as much lateral, but we're talking about rotating here. I'm gonna have my hips about 45 open as I come into contact. And as I finish my swing, I wanna make sure that I come all the way on around. So if you look at my hips now, if I look at this belt buckle, it's gonna be pointing at least to the target, preferably even a little bit to the left of the target. Some people that don't have as much flexibility just to the target's gonna be fine. But again, that's getting me to load up going back and to rotate that coming through to create that overall momentum in the swing. Now that we've got the momentum of the body, we've got that baseline for speed, let's add to that with the arms and the hands. This is where you're gonna really get the leverage in the golf swing. So as I'm coming down in the golf swing, we all know that we wanna have lag as we're coming into this golf ball. And then the key here is we're gonna release this lag out in front. So lag is simply an angle between my forearms and the club as I'm starting down. And then as I release that, I'm gonna get rid of those angles and that allows this club to whip through contact. So what I'd like for you to visualize here is let's imagine in the backswing, let's imagine there's a wall right here, a giant brick wall. Well in the backswing, I wanna be nice and wide and I want my club head to bash into that brick wall. So I'm gonna slam my club head into the brick wall going back. I'm getting really, really wide. I have very little wrist set. And as I'm coming down, I wanna imagine having that angle of lag and I'm gonna miss that brick wall. So I'm inside of it coming down. Then I'm gonna release all that speed. So I want you to go ahead and do about 100 repetitions with that good visual in your head. Wide club head's gonna be going through the brick wall going back. As I come down, I'm gonna miss the brick wall and then I'm gonna let all of that release. So do about 100 repetitions of that. Also do 100 repetitions focusing in on the belt buckle that we did first. And then I got one more drill for you that's gonna really help it take this over to the top. All right, so one thing that people often don't think about is where we're actually making contact on the face. And there's different pieces of the face that are gonna allow you for a lot more speed and a lot more distance. And there's some that are absolutely gonna destroy your distance. So if we imagine the club face broken into four quadrants, we're gonna have 
a vertical line here and straight up and down in the sweet spot and then we're going to have a horizontal line in the middle of the face so we have quadrant number one two three four on the club face now whenever i hit in the bottom two or in the bottom smaller lower two quadrants so three and four what's going to happen is what's called gear effect and as my club hits the ball it's actually going to roll the face forward because I'm hitting below the center of gravity and as that face rolls forward it creates spin more backspin on the golf ball so if I do this off quadrant number three not only does it create a lot more backspin but it also twists the face open or uh, excuse me close this way which is going to spin the ball to the right so if I hit it off quadrant three I'm going to have a ballooning fade kind of shot so if we're going this way it's going to balloon up and fade and that really really kills your distance we can't have that happen that's the that's the weakest part to hit the club the second weakest part is the low toe shot that's going to also get you more backspin but now the ball is going to start hooking it's not going to launch high enough and it's really just going to give you bad results there too if we go higher on the face we're going to have less spin and a higher launch if we can launch the ball high with low spin we're really going to hit it far if we go off quadrant number two up here high and off the hosel that's going to slow down our club head speed or our, our ball speed a little bit because th again that, that face is going to twist in so where we really want to hit the ball is just slightly high on the face either dead center on the sweet spot a little above the normal sweet spot where you'd think of it or slightly on out to the toe that's going to give us a high launch it's going to get us low spin and that's going to promote a little bit of a draw so if we have a, a par five a second shot on a par five and we're not sure if we can quite get there go ahead and take a good rip at it and try to hit it high on the toe you're going to get the farthest shots that you can get now that you've done 100 repetitions pausing we understand where to hit it on the club face we're going to do another 100 repetitions you can do this in your living room making sure we get a good turn with the hips going back nice lag release that lag good turn with the hips coming through and on every one of these practice swings i want you to visualize a nice high contact on the face and slightly on the toe if you can once you get comfortable with that visualizing it we'll go ahead and take it to the course and make some full swings all right guys focus on those keys and you're going to hit it a lot farther good luck That was right on the stick. Okay, so I hope you all really enjoyed this video and I got a great bonus for you. Now we all know if we're gonna create a lot of swing speed, we gotta have lag and then release that lag. And I got a video that's gonna go over the number one lag mistake that I see with all my students. This is gonna be an absolutely free video. It's gonna pop up here in a second, a preview. Click the link that pops up in your screen or down below in the description. You'll be able to see that entire video absolutely free of charge. If you like this video, please click the like button below. That always really helps us out and click the subscribe button. That way you'll see our latest videos to help your golf game plus Swing Speed Saturdays. I'll see you guys soon. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. If I do it this way versus holding that position, exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I want to use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.